Calibration, and really bias, schema is a procedure that imperfectly transforms a response into a useful measure. Some crime laboratories have no method or manner as to how, why, or when they should calibrate their instruments. Other laboratories have truly arbitrary intervals that they calibrate their instruments, but then they declare that this arbitrary interval is sufficient to ensure against lack of precision or accuracy or analytical drift without any sort of data or meaningful data to support such a declaration and such an establishment of an arbitrary interval. First, I ask you, who really cares about what some crime laboratory thinks they should be doing? If we let them run themselves, we get tragedies like San Francisco and Colorado or Nassau or Houston. While it is useful to discover their own published internal sentiments about the way that they do this, and it's always summarizes, this is the way we always do it, these types of ideas, it may prove to be useful to throw at them in the face if they don't follow their own established procedure. And their method of, quote, we do it every month or every week, but that's not really truly science. Remember, calibration and bias have to do with precision and accuracy, respectively. The issue surrounds analytical drift and other basics of metrology. Over time, regardless of use, however, heavy throughput does exacerbate the problem, and so too does the lack of use. All analytical devices lose their sensitivity, their precision, and their accuracy. There's a lot to show, and the best way to show is on our blog, this representation between the intersect of these dependent features over multiple measures. The goal is to minimize the risk of bias and calibration error, and it's got to remember it's a moving target at all times. You adjust one and the other may suffer. It is also quite costly to minimize both simultaneously. It is exponentially easier and cheaper to correct for calibration error than for bias error. For more on the nomenclature, there was a blog post that we posted, and it was entitled, It Rose by Any Other Name, More on Metrology and Its Nomenclature. We'd encourage you to take a look at that. To have a valid result that is close as scientifically possible to achieving a true result, those seeking to measure must prove and demonstrate that they are robust and stable in their approach to measurement. At a, min at a minimum, this is why they must establish external calibration curves in a metrologically responsible way using CRMs or certified reference materials and at least a 5x5 five five method with concentrations involving analytes of interest and, and the internal standards within the range of predicted responses. This is what we know as the demonstrated linear dynamic range. Why they must insert controls and verifiers. At the least, a high and low concentration involving analytes of interest and internal standards within the range of predicted response. Within a run, and third, why control charts must be maintained. While having a, quote, we do it every Monday plan is swell, it does not necessarily equate to demonstrating that the laboratory has a robust method and a stable instruments and environments which may result in good analysis that is valid and is close to achieving a true result as scientifically possible. They must have and use control charts and other data to justify that this established interval of calibration and accuracy schema is good. Calibration and its interval must be a data-driven decision and not an act of faith or guesswork. We would do well to remember that simply because there has been a demonstrated linearity within a certain dynamic range, and you have to remember they use ordinary least squares or coefficient of variation or basic regression analysis where we get to three nines when they should be using weighted least squares. In reality, it does not necessarily equate to a pronouncement that the measure itself is sound, meaning I suppose valid and true. All that it means, if properly established by a validated calibration and bias testing schema, such as the one that we just described moments ago, is that the measure is within some sort of predictive interval within some level of statistical tolerance under those given conditions and variables that give rise to the calibration and bias attempt in the exact matrix that the certified reference materials are in. The basic seven steps to a robust and valid calibration schema 
including certified reference materials include number one, plot response versus true concentration using the 5 by 5 method. Number two, determine the behavior of the standard deviation of the response. Number three, fit the proposed model and evaluate R2 adjust. Number four, examine the residuals for non-randomness. Number five, evaluate the p-value for the slope and any high order terms. Number six, perform a lack of fit evaluation and number seven, plot and evaluate the prediction interval. In industry, referring to the guideline for good clinical practice, U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or good laboratory practices and methods, or good manufacturing practices or methods, uh, or U.S. Environmental Protection Agency methods, or International Conference on Harmonization Publications. And you have to remember that there are no universal standards in terms of instructions for calibration and bias schemas in forensic science. A method needs to be revalidated, meaning at a minimum a new calibration curve established. Whenever there is a change in the method, whenever there is a change in the instrumentation, whenever there is a change in the software, whenever there is change in the environmental condition of the laboratory or where the testing occurs, Whenever there is a change in the consumables, meaning, for example, a new septa, a new injector port liner, a new o-ring, a new column, or it's removed or installed or clipped even, if the column is adjusted, or there's a new makeup gas cylinder installed, a new carrier gas uh, cylinder installed, a new golden seals installed, a new flame ionization detector is installed, and so on and so on. Whenever there is a recorded apparent aberrant result, Whenever the machine appears to be outside the validated control chart pre-established calibration and bias errors, and whenever the analyst has reason to believe or suspect that there's been any sort of analytical drift or loss in calibration in an increase in bias. Some folks have established that they're good laboratory practices that when executing a full shut shutdown and repowering up of the instrument itself, there's a significant enough change to require full calibration and bias determination to occur again. Others say that that's not a significant enough event, but at least they have data to support that decision. I ask you, in forensic science, where is the data?